Hey, it's all with news, opinions, and smooth analyses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not really. You may or may not know this by now, but I sell glyphs on the auction house. I don't sell nearly as many these days, but hopefully throughout Legion I'll enjoy the same prosperity that I have been in the previous five or so years that I've been in this market. The fast moving consumables market is a metagame that isn't for everyone, but it draws some basic similarities to WoW's main game and other MMOs. This is what I'd call the PvE market, where you'd have the usual customers that come around and make a few purchases, sometimes many purchases. And then there's a non-combat PvP initiated between individual sellers, and I'm not talking about simple undercutting to make your listing to be the most attractive sell, but deals and negotiations. And in the case I'm bringing up today, some of the outright nasty, but albeit clever and perfectly legal tactics some players use to profit. There's only one rule in the auction house, and that's to make profit. And the first lesson to learn in order to conquer your market is to know that you can't conquer your market. At least, not without burning it to the ground first. In a healthy market, prices are controlled by supply and demand principles and not a single person, which allows many sellers to profit fairly and buyers to not think that we sellers are this jackass oligarchy. I set my maximum price of glyphs to 500 gold, which is pretty much ridiculous, but I've gotta set it to something, so hey, I'll shoot for the moon. There have been a lot of bad vendors I've competed against, and I'm not going to go into all the types that I've encountered, but I'll just focus on one today. I call this one the Joker, who mostly wants to watch the world burn. And there he is, the jackass. Below my glyphs are at 500, but there's the Joker with five separate auctions at very different prices, all with a 48 hour duration. And above are the other players who don't care and are undercutting away, including me. The Joker's intention, like all of us vendors, is to make some profit. But the Joker doesn't have time to check and repost like the no-life auction house horse he'd have to compete with. He goes around this, and here's how it works. He'll create enough inventory to cast a net wide enough to cover the market, and with only 40 or so types of glyphs out at the moment, that's not very hard to do. Then he'll post them with all these parameters set, and then just kick back and relax. One of two things is going to happen from here. One is simply nothing. As you can see, most of the vendors could care less and will blindly undercut till their face turns blue or their margins turn red. Joker ain't making a dime off of those guys. The other possibility will come from who I'll call an enabler, who's the actual target market of the Joker, and is in fact the center of his business plan altogether. The enabler is a fellow vendor who's very knowledgeable about the market and is aware of the fastest moving items, or in this case, glyphs. Not one to settle for low profits, the enabler will buy out cheap auctions, including some of the Joker's auctions, and repost them at a higher price, somewhere below the 500 gold that I set. It's a smart move on the enabler's part, but that's what allows the joker to sell anything at all. So the enabler profits by being observant and proactive to maximize gains. The joker profits by forcing frustrated vendors to buy out his auctions, and has the advantage of not having to actively post. In fact, if the joker posted too frequently, the enabler would probably be less likely to buy him out. No one really loses here, especially regular buyers who get to enjoy low prices. The thing is though, these prices aren't what I'd call natural. If left alone, these prices can be higher and the market would be okay with it. In fact, other forces in the market will no doubt be affected by these price caps, but I'll limit my ranting to just the selling of glyphs. So what do I, what does a soul machine do to profit? Well, for me, I play the long game. Jokers post slowly because they have to. In this case, I'm trying to contact some of these vendors that might be enabling the Joker's behavior, and if they stop, then the Joker's profits dry up. These types of players typically last a few weeks, maybe a month or so, before they get tired of their minimal efforts yielding no result. Then they go away, maybe for a while, maybe for good. Then prices slowly recover for the entire market, not just a select few items. In an ideal and competitive market, I'll post pretty light, a single auction at a time with a 12 hour duration. Typically I'm totally cool with letting the next vendor nab a sale, it makes them happy. And happy vendors make a happy market. When it's clear that a single person is undercutting within moments of posting, vendors get frustrated and angry. Angry vendors become jokers or some other toxic type of vendor. I've learned that being cooperative and open to negotiation to other vendors pays off more than being the most frequent poster. There's one bit of feedback that I have for Blizzard about the auction house, well maybe more like a question, but what if Blizzard got rid of the 48 hour option? 
or just locked post durations to 24 or maybe even 12 hours. I only have experience backing up my opinion, but the 48 hour duration may be good for slow, low quantity markets like gear, mounts, and pets. But faster, high quantity markets like glyphs, potions, and enchants are vulnerable to ridiculous undercuts that are tantamount to, again my opinion, trolling or damaging what I'll call the spirit of commerce. Getting rid of the 48 hour auctions won't really solve anything, but I think it'll do a small part in mitigating this sort of behavior. That suggestion is pretty controversial since very little about the auction house has changed since launch, apart from how it's accessed. But I'd like to hear some thoughts about if this old system needs to be looked at, or is even this too much? Laissez faire, the market will repair itself. Maybe. That's the short for today. Let me know your thoughts below or if you'd be interested in a tutorial on Trade Skill Master, the add-on that I use for auctions, crafting, and other stuff. I think that was one of the first videos I wanted to do and I just kind of lost interest. Anyway, thanks for listening to my rant. Like and sub for more of my content, and I'm thinking of doing a short feature on an early access game that I've been playing lately called RimWorld. Maybe you'll see that sometime. Anyway, I'll see you guys Friday for the news. I'm Sol. Stay breezy, guys.